Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the Friday HSM Fast Track Hangout. This is our all new registration link, so thank you for everyone that joined us. Uh, this is actually also our new time that we are starting at 11 a.m. Pacific time. So uh, thank you for joining us again. Um, one, one thing to note, I guess, you know, before we get started, uh, I want to welcome our special guest this week. We have Sonny McCullough, who is a uh, trainer and CNC machinist with uh, the Patton Group. Sonny, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, um, I work for the Peyton Group, and I am their CNC application engineer for their trainers. Excellent. And we're very excited about uh, having you walk us through education through innovation this afternoon. So, you know, a, you know before, before we hand it over to Sonny, um, a couple of logistical things. So I did mention, as you're all aware, you know, the link for this new Friday Fast Track Hangout only went out over the last two days. So other friends that you have in the CNC HSM community may not have received the link. We'd ask you to, you know, extend the link, let them know that we do have a new registration link. We will be continuing these Friday Fast Track Hangouts, but please pass the word on that there is a new link and a new time, and this time we'll continue moving forward. So um, before we get started, I wanted to ask a question here. Have you signed up for the Autodesk Fast Track program? And we'll go into a little bit about what this is, and that's why we renamed these Friday Hangouts to the Fast Track Hangouts. We're about half the audience who voted. Everyone chime in here. If you're not sure what the Fast Track program is, we'll, uh, we'll explain here in a little bit. Okay, I'm going to close and share this. So uh, we have a few in the group that are the level 70 machinists. Um, Wayne, I'm sure we can probably point out who those individuals are. Um, we do have a few other individuals that are new to CAM and CNC machining. So uh, in a couple slides here, I will provide a link where you can sign up for the fast track to CNC programming. And uh, we've got you know almost half the audience that's currently a part of the fast track program, um, whether it's these Friday fast track more advanced topic hangouts or the Wednesday ones that we host on just getting started. So to continue on through here, so the Fast Track program is something that we've rolled out recently, and it actually is, is several different things. We host local events across the US. Um, this, actually yesterday, we hosted an event in Nashville, Tennessee. We have a few upcoming events in Florida, and I know this map doesn't show any of those here, but they're really actually live events across the US, as well as these online sessions. So um, I will provide the link. I guess you can see it up here. But what they really lead to, it, it actually also includes a free 30-day trial of HSM as well as free online training through Pluralsight. And uh, what it all actually culminates to is Autodesk University. So I'm going to ask the next question here. Have you been to Autodesk University? And uh, Autodesk University is an annual event that we host in Las Vegas. This year it is held, I believe, November 17th and 18th. And um, there, there are sessions taught from customers, from industry professionals, from Autodesk employees and developers, really regarding the new future developments of Autodesk and where the Autodesk software is going and where Autodesk is going as a company. So this really is a fantastic event, and uh, I know many of the Many individuals in the HSM community have gone. Uh, you can see here John Saunders. Many of you may be familiar with him from YouTube. He, uh, he actually hosted the first hands-on CNC course last year at Autodesk University. And for you know, Autodesk universities to come, HSM and CAM will be much more important and will be very present at Autodesk University. So we want to encourage our community to attend. So I'm going to close and sh share this. So actually, we have a lot of individuals in our group that uh, that have been to Autodesk University, which is fantastic. And, uh, you know, you know the community that has been, you know, of course, we'd love for you to share your feedback. And you know, if, you have, if you have any suggestions for courses or if you'd like to sign up to teach a course yourself, I believe that is still open for the next two weeks. So uh, we'd love to see the HSM community as part of this large Autodesk event. Um, for those that would love, would, love, would love to go and don't know how to get there, um, I'm going to hide this. There's actually an event going on right now called the Fusion Cam Challenge. So if you follow Kurt Chan on, uh, on Instagram, I think his handle is at Curtis.Chan, he's actually hosting this Fusion Cam Challenge where the prize is a trip to Autodesk University, and one was actually held last quarter as well. And I believe these will be, will be occurring the next several quarters up until Autodesk University. So uh, I believe the one for this 
challenge specifically is regarding work holding. So, um, you know, check out on Instagram, search Fusion Cam Challenge hashtag, search Curtis Chan, and you will find information on how to get to Autodesk University. If you're not able to make, make it to Autodesk University, you can actually watch previous recordings at au.autodesk.com. If we have time at the end of this session, I will share that link and some what that content looks like. Um, here is the link for the Fast Track program on top. So if you're not part of the Fast Track program, you're just getting started with HSM, go to this link and uh, you know you can you can join us in this fast track program where you get access to all of this fantastic content. And the last question I wanted to ask before we hand it over to Sunny is uh, what is most likely to drive growth in your shop? And we bring this question up every week. We want to understand where our community would like more content during these fast track Friday hangouts, as well as where the development team should be spending their time and allocating you know, their resources. We do have individuals from the development team in the background of this session, as well as every session, and we also have the product manager and application engineers here as well. So this is a great soundboard to uh, express the interest is, you know, where you think you will drive your shop business and uh, what areas you would like some additional help with. So we're about half voted right now. I mean, this, this question really is the most important, so please provide your input here into what you think will be driving growth. Uh, in your shop specifically. Okay, so I'm going to share the results here. So uh, this is pretty interesting. I don't think we've seen this before where the the largest grouping is actually true four or five axis. Al, I think you've joined now. Um, have you seen this before in these Hangouts? Yeah, I am here, uh, along with a bunch of guys from Thunder stuff. Uh, seen, so, so this is a funny thing, actually. Uh, literally, while you're doing it, um, there's, I'm at John Saunders up with a couple of people getting here for the open house, uh, and one of the guys says that he just switched to using uh, Fusion for his complete Plasma workflow. So uh, that zero percent is incorrect. He just couldn't vote because he's watching it on my organizer view. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, thanks for that input. And uh, it, it does seem like we have a, a larger percentage on the true four or five axis than we have in the past. So. That we is very we certainly are seeing an increase there. I think that was down lower, uh, down lower in the thirty percent range. And we're we're absolutely seeing the turning and mill turn go up now that we've sort of properly articulated that. But a nice balance. Absolutely. So uh, I think that's all I've got. You know, to to get started here. That's not what we want. Um, so Sonny, I'm actually going to hand it over to you, and uh, give you presenter privileges here. Let's see which so thank you everyone for participating in those uh, in those polls. As I mentioned, you know that really does help us understand where the community is interested in growing their business, and of course we want to help our whole community improve their business. That's why we're here. So, you know, thank you for providing that input. My name is Sunny McCullough. I am a Fresno State student. This will be my fourth year at Fresno State, and this is now my first full year at Fresno City College, working under my father, Mark McCullough who is a CAD CAM instructor at Fresno City College, and he has a CAM program that goes from start to finish. So by the time you graduate with that certificate or program degree, you will be able to set up your own machine, design your own part, program it out, and machine it out all on your own. So as the first slide you can kind of see, <laughs> it's still on my right-hand side, it's just not on my main screen. My handle name for my Instagram is SunnyGirlCNC. Um, I do post a few videos on my Instagram that get quite a few hits. So this is what I usually decide to post. Um, they're time-lapse videos of machine operations that I do. Um, this particular video is what we will be going over in Fusion today. That is going to be the first op right there. Uh, the Instagram, I find, has been very, very popular and helpful in getting your name out there as well as your ideas. I also put my email address at my in, in my bio for people to email me when they have questions or if they want CAD designs. Um, I give them the files, they can take them, they can modify them, they can do whatever they want with them. So that's why I do that. My background is I am a former Fusion 360 Catalyst. So the, when we first started getting the Fusion out there, they hired students to go out and promote the product and go out and teach it and make their own little seminars for it. And I was one of the people that did that. 
The picture on the left-hand side is Mark Terryberry, you know, Haw's tip of the day. He was actually at IMTS with us, and he got to interview me and kind of talk to me about women in machining, and more specifically, just the younger generation in machining. Um, right now, I'm a current CNC specialist and applications engineer for the Peyton Group. So what that basically means is we sell, we are an educational reseller for products and software, including lasers, virtual welders, CNC machines. Um, what else do we do? We do 3D printers. There's a whole bunch of stuff that we just sell, and we sell the software for it as well. So when people buy it or they have the funding to buy it, not all of the teachers or students know how to use the software or the machinery. This is when I would come in and go and teach them how to use it. Um, like previously mentioned, I am a fourth year industrial technology state technology major at Fresno State. Um, industrial technology is my major because we do not have a focus in CNC machining, and that's why I put right below, I'm a one-year student at Fresno City College because Fresno City College actually has a full state-of-the-art lab with 15 Haas machines, or we have a couple of Fanuc machines, we have conventional lathes, we have other machinery, and we actually just found out that we got the funding for a five-axis machine that should be delivered sometime in June. So that's, that's the next year's project that we're going to be working on. And I currently work with Project Lead the Way, which is a curriculum, or it's a STEM-based program all throughout California. It's actually national now. And what it does is teachers who want to get into robotics and electronics and mathematics, any sort of STEM or STEAM activity, get to buy into what Project Lead the Way does, and it's curriculum. So the problem that I'm finding with Problem Lead the Way, Project Lead the Way, is they have very few portions of curriculum for CNC machining. Now, it's a great way to start, but once they take off and actually find a passion for it, there's not a lot of options based on Project Lead the Way's curriculum. There's another program called Immerse to Learn that is actually a virtual CNC software. It's a software, but it also has like an NC simul simulation before you even touch the machine. So the two basic ways to get curriculum for CNC machining in California is through Project Lead the Way or through Immerse to Learn. Um, I don't feel like that's enough curriculum for California, especially to go into in-depth things, whether that may be at the elementary level or high school level or college level. You need more options. So my job right now and what I'm doing with my company is trying to create more curriculum that students and teachers alike can follow. The next slide will be showing what I've been doing. Um, the top left hand will be at our Fresno location here. Those are two teachers that came to me for training, and we got to teach them how to use the software and how to use a little Techno DaVinci stepper router. That was an awesome experience. They got to actually sit there and draw something out. The one right below it is actually going to be at the CITEA conference up in Oakland this year. That was a couple weeks ago. And the, the machine that's right there is a Roland MDX40, so that's actually going to be taking an STL file and just making a very rough toolpath off of it. So the reason that that's very beneficial to teachers who don't know how to toolpath is that they can put a part in there, select their stock, select the tool, and just rough it out. That is the very basis of getting machine shop started. It does have an option to do G-code, which is a very cool option once teachers and students alike can get a little bit more advanced, but it's not all the way perfect, and we're currently working on a post for our own usage to post to Roland. Um, the picture on the right-hand side, which is the Benchmill 6000, Intellitech was working with Project Lead the Way, but Intellitech is also working with Fusion and HSM. We actually programmed those little blocks right there. They say COPPO. This particular teacher wanted to teach students how to handwrite program first and then go to CNC basis. So what we did is I went backwards and I programmed the words COPPO, C-A-P-O, on HSM, posted the G code and worked backwards from her and I said, where does this relate to in the code? Where does this relate to in this ge geometrical space? So going backwards from code to handwriting was very beneficial for her and she actually uses what I taught her in her class now. So that was really cool. This was about two months ago. This is my design for a Peyton Group card holder. This is, like I said, the company that I work for. But they give me full reign to design whatever I want. I make cool things. I get to test out their product. Um, I make curriculum for HSM, for also MasterCam, for SOLIDWORKS. I make curriculum for all. 
I do I don't have a preference I personally work for master cam or not master I per personally work for fusion 360 but in the schools right now we have master cam now I want to make sure that everybody has a fusion of both where we're, we're using multiple programs because I feel like it's very beneficial for the student to know multiple programs and so this particular one was programmed on master cam but I have the drawing in Fusion. We have a lot of this stuff that we do in both, so that way if teachers ever needed it, we could give it back in both. And that's what I try to do. My whole job is education. Um, on the left-hand side, this is a robotics teacher from Duncan High School here in Fresno, and his robotics team actually needed some help building their framework. It was a part of their frame needed to be cut out, and they needed some holes drilled and stuff like that. They did not know how to use their machines, so they came to us, and my father and I actually helped them build their whole framework, and they got to go and present it at their show and their competition. On the right-hand side, this is one of my personal achievements. Um, this is a student at Fresno State who served in the military for many, many years and came back with severe PTSD. Um, Paul is a great guy and I, I, I love him he is just so funny and so full of life and one of the things that he said to me and I, it still sticks with me is he says when he goes in machines he can zone out of the world he doesn't think about the problems that he has and he can sit there and make something that he likes so in his program he has severe PTSD couldn't really focus could really take notes he gets frustrated couldn't do it so I took all of his notes for him, worked with him one-on-one. -on -one. Whenever he needed help, he would come to me. So I got a certificate for helping disabled students programs, but this was all in the past year. Understand that I was a biology pre-med major for three and a half years at Fresno State and decided to get into this about a year and a half ago. So I'm very excited to see where I'm going. This is only the beginning. Um, these are some of the pictures from IMTS. If people were at IMTS, we were in that lower level for the educational team. We were right by the Gene Haw Scholarship Foundation booth. And these are some of the pictures. The, the ladies on the side of me, that is Carolyn Cook, and that is another female who I cannot remember her name, but her father works for Vincennes University. So they brought her along to show that women in machining is making a, a very big impact. This, this world of machining is not just for men. It is for women and students alike. There's no preference. So what we did is we created a Googie rocket, which was actually a two-part operation. The first part was going to be done on the lathe. So that, that, that was the cylindrical part with the threads on it. And the second part was going to be done on the, the Haas, the VF2. That was the, new, that was the next gen. That was the really nice one. That was the next gen machinery that they were so lucky to let us use there. And we made that right on the spot. As we were making them, teachers were taking them. So we actually did not have a stock of this material already done. We were making them on the spot. So I'm sorry if you didn't get one at IMTS. We were extremely, extremely busy making them on the scene, and we didn't even get them. So we have the files. We should probably start making our own, but we didn't even get one. Um, Titan, everybody knows Titan. Titan actually came over down to the booth and talked to me. Titan and I are actually now really good buddies. We see each other at the HTEC events and other events, and every time he sees me, he is so happy about having women in machining, and it's actually very funny. The last time we were at HTEC, he made a point to say, men in machining, and then he looked at me and said, oh, I'm sorry, Sonny, women in machining. And the whole crowd started laughing. So I want, I want to break the stereotypes that this is a field for just men. This is not a field for just men. This is a field for everyone. And the, the idea that STEM and STEAM is taking off and getting funding from schools, and teachers are actually going back to teach their kids something that they can take and make a career out of it. That's what I really want to get at. So Ivan May actually works for Autodesk. He's up in Seattle. He does something with the educational side. He's an educational manager. So what he decided to do this past year was make a CAM, program, CAM programmer competition, which you can kind of see right here, that basically took the, the it was the CAM samples off Fusion 360, the samples that were already there, I think there's four or five of them, and we had an eight-hour period to machine them out. That, that was it. That was, that was the entire competition, to machine something out that had the correct stock, correct tools, correct everything, and to make sure it ran. So we actually got um, confirmation from, I think it was Verisurf, and there was another Haas machine that was there that took our programs and simulated them right there in front of us to see if they ran. 
if you can tell, there are four females in this program or in this competition, which was unheard of. This is at the national level. We got all the way to Kentucky last year, got the demo team to do it. We got the funding for it. So in the next coming year, schools can now participate in what is called the CAM, or CAM competition for Fusion 360 in machining stuff out. This is also Ivan May coming to Fresno City College. And this is where I first got my job offer to work for Fusion 360 because I started teaching and started saying that I want to make a career out of this. Um, I find a passion for teaching. I find a passion for learning. Um, I think as an educator, what most teachers don't realize is you're never stopping learning. You don't stop learning. You always have to keep learning, whether it's the new Fusion update, whether it's the new HSM update, whether it's the new Inventor update. You as an educator have to find a passion to want to teach as much as learn. So that's what I always tell people. This is my senior project that I have done, which is what we will be going over in Fusion today. We want to kind of talk about additive manufacturing as well as subtractive manufacturing. This is actually done on an SLA printer, which is stereolithography, and it was on a Form 1 Plus from Form Labs. So those are going to be layers printed in 24 micron layers, very, very dense layers. And if you can kind of tell at the top, it didn't quite finish because it ran out of material, it ran out of resin at 80%. But that's okay, because this was a prototype. So it showed, it did its job, it showed the prototype. But this is actually what my senior project was, which is a Kurt Vice speed handle. The Vice handles, which I did a whole presentation on this, are very heavy, they're cast iron. I think everybody knows how heavy those things are. So what we made is a two hole, which is two radius turn handle that had one for torque and one for speed. Um, the actual design of it can vary, the engraving on it can vary, it didn't really matter. It mattered that the bolt hole sizes were correct and that they could go through and that it was lightweight. This is currently what we're working on at Fresno City College, which is the tool length offset gauge. So once it's completed, this was only our first op that I got to do this past Wednesday. Um, once it's completed, you know, we got the back op, we got a couple drill holes on the side. It will be anodized, and we'll put the we'll put the gauge in, and that that'll be our project that we get to take take home. So we get to make it super nice. Um, currently, we only have three access machines at Fresno City College, and we're getting that five access in. So all I really know how to program is two, three access. Um, four access have had some chance or some time with it, not so much. Uh, most of what I have done with it has been on a roll-in, which isn't necessarily g-code programming it's just that stl file so once we get that five axis in there i totally plan to learn a lot more on that and then this is my information if anybody wants to contact me or find out what we do or if you need help educational wise like i said i write curriculum this is what i try to do i go out and set up your stuff and that's what my main thing is and of course i had to throw in my my lovely child max he is my machine shop dog that i couldn't couldn't imagine being without. He's an awesome dog, and I take him wherever I go. So that was a little bit about me, and I guess now I can go to my presentation. Wayne? Hey, Sonny. Yep, that's awesome background information that you're providing for us. Um, I think there was one thing that I, I think you had mentioned. Uh, you did talk about doing the Skills USA and your work with Project Lead the Way. Um, and, uh, and I do appreciate that you got into showing some of that additive machining or additive uh, manufacturing in there as well when you're working on your project for the handle. So it's really good background information, and I think this would be a great place to jump into it. Perfect, yeah. So this is actually the speed handle in, in the vise that we have. This is that Kurt vise. Here we go. This is the Kurt vise that we have. Let's get the 3D mouse going. No, nope, no, nope, 3D mouse is not going. Totally fine. Perfect. So here we go. That's the Kurt vice. This is the actual speed handle where it will go. So I think we all know that. I'm going to pop this right here. So we drew that in there. Let's see if I can do this. We drew that in there. And this is going to be the stock that we have. Very easy stock, very small stock. We do this in a two operation setup. And right now we only did the one operation because we just decided to keep it simple for this particular model. Let's regen that. There we go. I want to take this. We'll show this off really quick. This is going to be that model. And then I'll put that stock right there. So just to show what we do, we're going to face off 
And here, I'm actually going to pause this really quick. So with normal work holdings and everything like that, it, in the industry, it's about speed. It's about tolerances. It's about getting that in there as quickly and as accurate as possible. For educational uses, it is not, not as fast as possible. Yes, we try to make it fast so that we can have everybody there have an opportunity to cut, but we want to make sure that a person knows what they're doing. So I'm going to let this play out very quick. So we, we did a little clearance stock right here on the outside. Oh, it's only playing the face and that. That's why. Hold on. Let's do this. Let's do all of it. There we go. Perfect. So there we go. Speed that up just a little bit. That's a face operation. And for this particular model, those holes were quite small. So yes, we did want to pre-drill them with that spot drill. We drilled all the way down with an eighth inch end mill or drill bit right there. Did that. That was just a circular interpolation right there in the bolt hole. And this is where our lathe part would actually be press braked in. So it's a brake that we just pop it in there. And with the friction, it actually welds it together. So this was basically a two operation or two machine part that we did. And the students that were working both with lathe and mill got to design their own handle. The students that were just working with mill had some handles that were already pre-designed for them. So speed that up just a little bit. Keep going, keep going. And it will go to the outside contour, and it'll have all of that done. So that was the first operation that we had. On the back operation, we faced off the rest of the material, and we added a chamfer to it to make it smooth. That is pretty much the basis of what we do. Now I kind of want to go into each one of these. Let's do, let's do the large hole first. So that is what we're doing. The large hole is where it actually goes in. And one of the things that with education you have to understand is we don't, uh, we don't know anything. You don't even know how to set a vice in there. We have to go through step by step. So before we even went into putting this in the machine, we had to sit here and draw this out. Once we have our G-code to actually run, how does our G-code relate back to what we did in our CAD file? This spindle speed, 12,000. 12,000 is actually an S-word. So we, when we are running our part, our teacher has to make sure what he will ask us, what is this? What is this? What is this? So our S-word will say 12,000 RPM. So we have to be able to tell him where that is. Our F-word will be the cutting feed rate. So all of this, the tool, T, T4 is where it's at. So the T4 actually has an H word associated with it, which will be H4. So when we're doing all of this, we have to say it what it is. So T4 is associated with H4. Our spindle speed is 12,000. Our cutting feed rate is 52 inches per, or 72 inches per minute. When we start going to our geometry, of course, that's there. With circular, you know, you get into your I's and J's. No one, we don't really check where the geometry is going. What we check is the Z depth. So I believe that Z depth is at whole bottom. I, I, I want to say it's at 0.5, no, it's at 0.23, because we, we put it a little bit down. So it's at 0.23. So when we're, when we're reading our code on our machine, doing single block option stop, you know, 5% rapid, all of that has to be turned on, activated. When we're reading our code, if we do not see the correct Z depth, we, are, we just have to stop. We have to stop, we have to go back and check our program. Another thing about our program is that we program from bottom to top. So our Z0 is actually at the bottom of our part. And before I go over here, we're going to go over to model so we can show it. Our Z0 is actually at the bottom of that part right there. The bottom of the stock will be right in that corner. That is where we program with our Z0. So that way when we flip over our operation, we have a flat surface to say what it is actually Z depth wise. Um, one of the benefits of that, that we have, that's actually a learned, the Z0 at the bottom is a learned skill that we have had to come to, because in the beginning, we were only allowed to program from the top, or the top of our stock. So when we were engraving or contouring and we were cutting, we actually had a breakthrough value to get it out of the part. With this part, we're, we're doing the opposite value. So our, our Z0 will be at the bottom and our stock is a positive. So when we're cutting down, that is how much we know. And so it makes us easier for us to read and for us to do a flip operation. But like I said, this is for CAM 20, which will be the, the preceding class of CAM 10. With CAM 10, we were taught how to do stuff like this. This is what I teach. This is actually what I teach for our teachers in, for Project Lead the Way when they want a little program. 
So this is, consider this a, a, a REN shape file. This is, this is REN shape. This is wood. This is plastic. This is something that teachers can put into their bench mill, and it's not going to be super hard or super hard to cut. It's going to be very easy, and what they're going to do is just engrave, maybe emboss something. We can probably put a shell mill down there and make a shell that out. So they'll have a little nameplate that they can take with their name on it. So the fact that they are now able to recognize stock, write their name, program their name, and I think I actually, no, I do not have this one cammed out. So this one is going to be what I basically do. This is a nameplate. So the teachers will take this, take this file, and they can add more names to it, more geometry. They can add files and pictures, anything they want to it. And what they're doing is they're just engraving the top of it. Once they get to there, then we go to, the, I'll show you this one. This is our merged six-pack holder. So this is one of the projects that we did last year in CAM 10, which incorporated both the engraving as well as, you know, pocketing. We, this was the one where we actually started going off the bottom of the part because we started getting some depth in it. So this is one of the, ver the versions that I do. This is how I, keep, how I send it to teachers. This is the drafting view. But this is the actual view of everything all merged together. This is our six-pack holder that we have and that we get to create. So everything is done on a 4 by 8 table, a little techno router. Um, we do it out of MDF material, and we get to paint it, we get to color it, we get to stain it, whatever we want to do to it, and we get to take it home. So that's a whole project that I have up there. So this was basically going from how it works. This is program one. This is moving up in program one. And program two will be getting over to here, to setting up the big machines, to setting up stuff where you can have multiple jaws, multiple jaw setups. Another thing that we try to do is have the jaws have a fixed jaw to where it'll lo locate in, lock in right over here. So that means that we take our half-inch end mill, which is this is what it was, and we'll make a little fixture for it. So we hold everything at um, 115 thou, 0 0.115. That is our golden rule when we have to hold something. Of course, you can go a lot smaller, but for education, you want things big. You don't want to have them small. You don't want to have any sort of chance of error. So for education, we do do things a lot safer. We are not pushing speeds. We're not pushing depths. We're, we're trying to do very basic knowledge stuff. So this is why I try to do it this way. Um, so we went through the cam of it. We went through that. This was the actual speed handle, and we actually get to teach people how to render it. So rendering is something that isn't part of cam, but it's part of fusion. So once you get to hear the rendering, you can actually do some cool little drawings for it that you get to send out. So here was the whole final product. Let me go back to my cam and play it one more time and this is this is what we do and this is how we set up our operations now angelo said i believe it was a couple weeks ago that he was used to using the dead blow hammer to fix things in we still use the dead blow hammer we still get to use the vice handles and you know trying to center everything off we do have probing systems now which we just got to learn to use this semester so that's very cool but before that, we were using the edge finder to find our work offsets, our G54, G55. We're using an edge finder and a 1, 2, 3 block, which is pretty standard. That's how we do it. But there are new ways. The, the probing, that is a, a completely new, that's awesome. It's, it's so much more accurate, so much easier. So I think that's one thing that we need to focus on. Um, squaring off the vise was something that we definitely learned how to do from scratch. We had to sit there and use the magnetic base with the dial indicator, square that off. So from start to finish, we got to learn to set up a machine. And I think that's something that every student or every machinist needs to know beforehand so that way they feel more confident in what they're doing. And if ever need be, someone has a question or someone wants to be taught something, they can sit there and they can say, I remember how to do this. I know how to do this and have the confidence to do that. Because if you don't have the confidence to know where your Z value is, you will crash the machine. So this is, it's, it's all just for knowledge and for safety purposes. So this is an 82 degree soft jaw, which is countersunk 82 degree chamfer bit right there. So it's got four sides. So the benefit of this is when putting that in there, you can have one, two, three, and four workable surfaces that you can actually fit different fixtures into. So the reason that this is good for education is if you screw up one side, you got three others. So that's, that's why we do that. Very smart. Now, understand education, there are going to be a lot more mistakes. 
there's going to be a lot more, oops, I, I got the wrong Z value, oops, I forgot option stop, oops, I forgot single block. So the oops in this always, you always, always, always want to make sure your parameters are set. We are not allowed to go out to the machine and program or and even touch the machine unless our parameters are completely set. Our tool list with feeds and speeds have to be set before we're even touching it. Our, the, all of our G54s, G55s, anything like that has to be double checked. And when actually machining, every student has to do a tool length offset. So every, every student has to go in and program them. And what my father does, which will drive me crazy, but I'm so thankful that he does, is he deletes them out once a student is done. So every student, when they come in the next day, has to redo it so that way they get that practice daily. There is a very good question. And by the way, your, your father is a very good teacher. You, you learn from a very good teacher. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's good. Repetition is the best way to learn. And, and the truth is most errors happen because you set a work offset wrong or you didn't pick up your tool. So just making that muscle memory is good. Yes. Uh, on, there's a good question in here. It's actually from Renee, uh, our kernel architect. He's wondering how many students are coming through the program. So as of right now, um, the students that come through the program, I want to say, are 30 in total. Per year graduating, it varies. Um, Fresno has a high population, but not a high enrollment. And especially with industrial technology, the focus at the state level, which is where I'm at, the Fresno State level, is more of quality control versus hands-on. We are hiring out machine shop managers versus people who can actually run machines. Um, as far as graduation rates go, I couldn't give a number figure, but I do know there are a lot of people that start the program that get their degree. So I'd say out of the 30, maybe 20 per year. Ah, very good. I think, so there's a separate question in here to complete aside, and I also see that uh, your father, Mark, is on the webinar. He says you're yeah. doing a good job in the questions here. Lawrence is wondering about this Saunders Open Test, so uh, there's a couple of us from Autodesk that know uh, Renee is just on remote. Myself, Curtis, and, and uh, Lars will all be here if you're in the area of Ohio. Uh, so on the note of schools, uh, Xander is just mentioning that there's 100 manufacturing engineers per year coming out of Cal Poly. Uh, so that's kind of neat. If there's any other instructors on here, I think it'd be fun for you to mention how many people are in your programs. So going back to Cal Poly real quick, let me pull this up. Um, Cal Poly, Martin Cook, one of the great teachers at Cal Poly. This is actually his daughter, the, the blonde lady right, uh, two, two people left of me. She is actually working at a machine shop right now, and I couldn't tell you where it's at in Slow. I think it's actually in Atascadero. She's working at a machine shop right now daily, learning welding, learning machine shop, lathe. Um, I know she's doing some painting. She does, oh, what else does she do? She does casting. I know that. So she's actually in industry. She is currently going to the community college down there, Cuesta, and she's trying to get back into slow, but she is in industry working that way. So I want to I want to shout her out really quick. So if you're shouting out for uh, women supporting our trade, Kathy Loman, if you don't know her, uh, she runs the Gene Haas Foundation. She's another excellent supporter of manufacturing and education specifically. Yes. Looks like we have a comment from Lawrence, uh, and he wanted to know if you'd be uh, if you'd be willing to teach a class at uh, AU this year. Yeah, um, I would love to teach a class at AU if I was asked to. Um, just got to double check with school, because I still am in school. This past semester, I took 23 units and missed most of my semester due to conferences and shows and teaching events and I, I want to try to finish my degree as quickly as possible so that way I can get into the workforce full time. But right now, I have to just double check my schedule. But if it's open and I can teach, I would be more than happy to teach at AU. That'd be great. Excellent. Uh, excellent idea getting that schooling behind you. <laughs> yeah. uh, a, couple, so a couple of comments. For, for you and anybody else that wants to teach at AU, a call for pre uh, presenters is out. So the way that works is uh, you make a proposal. And then those proposals get reviewed and accepted. If you want help coaching through writing one of those proposals, I'm happy to help you or Lawrence or uh, Rob Lockwood or any of you guys that, that want to do it. Um, there's another question here or, or comment. There's uh, some people would love to know a little bit about the capstone project. Do you do a capstone project? Uh, if you do, what is it? So the capstone project is going to be the project that we're going to be focusing on next year. And it is a desktop CNC router. 
So I think we got the entire cost down the materials down to about 170 bucks, if I'm correct. And what Autodesk did is they actually helped fund this project. And one of the main presenters in this was Ivan May. Ivan May actually took us to where we went and did our Skills USA options, but he wanted to come back to Fresno and give us another way to stay with Autodesk. So if we want to kind of look to the left-hand side, oops, capstone project, right here. All of these students are part of the program, including myself. All of these students are part of the program, and these are all of our little parts that we have. So we're all working on this project all collectively trying to make designs, trying to make it work. We do not have a final project yet, but this is basically what we have so far. Um, we have a little trolley right here. So basically what it is, it's going to be a P, uh, MDF board at the bottom. It's going to have a spindle. It's going to be able to be a router. I'm not sure on the bed size. We were still working that out and how everything is going to be held together. But the, pro, the, Porsche, the whole idea behind this is, is you come in, you can design out your own CNC, customize it. We can probably anodize some of this, engrave some of this, make it your own CNC, and it's going to be under $200. You take it home, and you can machine stuff off of it. Of course, the tooling and electrical, everything else like that will be on you, but the idea to come in, build your own CNC machine, and take something home, that is what we want to do, so that way kids have something that they can take home. So, so Renee better be better be careful asking this question. Uh, but a, again, a question from Renee, one of our uh, lead developers. He's saying, is there anything specific as an educator uh, that you feel would make uh, fusion fusion better? I'm curious to hear what you have to say. Maybe what some of the other <laughs> educators have to say. Maybe it's completely non-traditional. It's like I, I'd like a way to automatically grade people's work. I mean. I, I don't know what the answer is, but um, it's kind of an open conversation question that I'm curious to get your input on. Um, as an open uh, open ended, I would definitely say the black the back plot option. Um, Xander Xander got me on that one. Uh, that is something that we use in Mastercam a lot because we do program with Mastercam at Fresno City College. That is something that we use in Mastercam daily. We we always try to see the Z devs, everything like that, and back plotting it with the tool. So I, I would say that that would be something that is more beneficial to us, whether or not we can see that in like a different, so we have cam simulation, everything like that. If we had a whole pull down menu just on back plotting and seeing where it was in relation to the stock and everything else, I feel like that would be very helpful and beneficial. So actually on that note, we, uh, we're getting ready to do a little bit of research on that, but I'm happy to get the comment, the comments now that we've brought it up. There's two sides to backplotting. There's there's the sort of reverse post side where we go backwards and try and figure out what that G code is going to mean, and then there's the other the, another concept where you could just simply see see the G code next to the um, the toolpath in the software. So you could correlate this line with this G1 move. Are you looking to see correlated G code with with motion? Is that what you're really after? Or are you looking uh, for a true back plotter where it's kind of a check the homework type scenario. So uh, that's a I'm, question for everybody on the call as much as it is uh, for you also. I would definitely do both. Uh, I would say both on that one because, uh, sorry, I'm going to throw out Mastercam out there, but we, I, I support both. Um, with Mastercam, when you have the black plot options at the top of the screen, you actually also have the Z depths at the bottom, live time, and it'll show you what it will be in the code. So that is very helpful. Um, one of the things that we do at Fresno City is we focus on G and M code. That is that is what we use to run our machines. And if we are not confident what a G40, what a G90, G43, G98, G99, if we cannot tell the instructor what that code does, we cannot run. So having okay. one of the what that's why we use it. So, okay, so again, that's still I, I'm not trying to. Uh, distract, but it's an excellent conversation to have. That doesn't necessarily mean uh, a need for a reverse uh, a reverse post. That's to me, that's still a comment of you're wanting to correlate motion and see see um, output GRM codes. It's not as important that you did it backwards. I mean, I guess the the thing, the reason for Simcoe is it's a third party double checking the homework. So that's that's the real question. Do you do you not trust us enough with G code that you want somebody else to check it, or would you simply like to see uh, the G code that's correlated with with motion? Those are the kind of the two uh, scenarios. But 
I should look at the comments and see. And it, this is a conversation that probably will take a lot longer than 30 <laughs> seconds on a webinar. But I think it's a good conversation to have with the context of uh, all the conversations that are going around it. So for the back plot, what we used it mainly for was with these 82 degree countersink holes right here. When we were getting the z-depths and everything like that, back plotting was a very easy way to see where it was in the code, as well as see if we were doing it correctly. So it's not necessarily a check for fusion or a check for the teacher, it's a check on the students. Um, with education, that is what we try, to sh we try to push. Understand it's not who's right, who's wrong, it's did you learn, do you understand it? So that's why with the back plot, if a student can sit there and say this is why this works, it's easier for us to learn. That makes sense. And we've got a lot of good comments coming in that we can, that we can review it. Good. Well, think? most of you that are commenting expect more conversations around this, and I will be reaching out over the next uh, couple of weeks on this. Awesome. Are there any other questions? I don't see any other questions, but I can certainly, on behalf of Autodesk and the whole, um, the whole manufacturing community, thank you for, A, representing women in a, in a trade where there's not many, and B, helping with teaching, so two, two great noble causes. So thank you so much. You're very welcome, and thank you for having me. Um, I definitely hope to be a part of future projects and see what I can do for Autodesk and just women in machining. Thank you, Sonny. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Yeah, Sonny, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much. And this was a fantastic presentation. And, you know, as Al mentioned, two, two things that are very important to the, you know, machining community. Um, so, you know, we, we really appreciate your time and walking through all this with us. Yeah, you're very welcome. Thank you guys for having me. It meant a lot. Yeah. Absolutely. So before before we end this session, I want to give a plug to one thing here. Um, so um, Autodesk will be present. So Haas Demo Days uh, in the United States, I believe it's only a United States event. But on May 10th next week, um, Autodesk will be present at 25 of the Haas locations across the U.S. So uh, if you have some time, you know, go visit your local Haas reseller. Stop by, say hello to the Autodesk team. Um, we will have individuals at many of these locations, including application engineers, and a lot of the host locations will actually be running parts that uh, that we've helped them program. So uh, go check out, you know, Fusion 360 will be very present at these uh, events. And uh, the last thing I wanted to bring up, you know, again, the Fusion Cam Challenge. So follow Curtis.Chan on Instagram, check out the Fusion Cam Challenge, check out the, uh, the hashtag for Fusion Cam Challenge. And, uh, you know, you can see all these submittals that have been coming in. Um, over the last couple days and up through next week. And uh, as we mentioned previously, the prize for this, the grand prize is actually a, win, uh, a trip to Autodesk University fully paid for. There are some other prizes as well, but uh, the grand prize is a trip to Autodesk University in Las Vegas. Um, so I think there's a lot of people that feel like their work holding isn't, isn't good enough to win. And part of the reason we did part of this as a raffle is uh, there's a lot of creativity. A lot of you do it may be basic. You may not seem like very much, but it could be very inspirational for the thousands of people that are starting machining for the first time. So please don't think there's anything, any concept too little. I talk to machinists on a regular basis that don't understand things like wear compensation or uh, how to do uh, a Z value in the fixture offset. A lot of people would touch, always touch their parts off the top. And there's so many things where you might assume it's, it's a basic that there's hundreds or thousands of people that don't know. So uh, don't think anything you're doing is basic. Please, please share. Um, the yeah, other I'll comment was sure. your school presetter file. Uh, some people asking if they can get access to that, Sonny. So if you're willing, uh, let me know and we'll find a way of sharing it. Yeah. Um, all of my files that I do, uh, I have them both in Mastercam files and Fusion files. And I have been sending them. Like I said, my Instagram has been very, very popular lately. So I send them when they ask them. And if you guys would like to have open-ended files, have them. I am all for education. Perfect. Thank you so much. Fantastic. So I guess the last couple links I wanted to show here, you know, we've been talking a lot about Autodesk University here. Um, all of the videos are available if you go to au.autodesk.com. So I guess I, I mispronounced the dates previously. It's November 14 through 16 this year. So check out videos from last year. Uh, you know, the HSM community, most people, on this uh, Fast Track Hangout are part of the HSM community, but 
you know, this is a fantastic place to engage with other members of the HSM community. The, uh, the weekly hangouts are posted on the YouTube channel. If you go to playlist under webinars, there's about 30 videos posted there now, and these videos get posted uh, either at the end of Friday or early on Monday. So uh, if you miss a hangout, you know, we encourage everyone to attend live. You get the interaction with, you know, Renee and Al and Wayne and all the, the background folks that, that make all this happen. So we encourage everyone to participate live, but if you miss it for whatever reason, um, you know, we do have those up here uh, as recordings. And then uh, the Autodesk Knowledge Network, we, we bring this up every week, but this is a fantastic resource. You know, if you're self-educating and you're, you're working at home, you're struggling with something, there's probably an article here in the uh, Autodesk Knowledge Network that can help you get started or uh, begin to get sorted out. So uh, I think that's all that we have today. Um, so thank you everyone for joining. Have a wonderful Friday and a wonderful weekend. Uh, see you next week.